Okay, so we are going to continue with our series on facial nerve palsy and the smile reanimation procedures. So we are going to first talk about the nerve procedures that are available to us. So first of all, we have to decide on what the motor input is going to be. So the motor input, that is the donor nerve, which is going to help re innovate the muscle. What are those options? So first of all, you have to know the etiology as mentioned in the previous video. So if it is trauma, if it is a direct straightforward injury to the facial nerve, then a primary repair of the nerve obviously is the best procedure or in cases where the gap between the distal and the proximal end is more and we may need to harvest a sural nerve graft and repair the nerve. But in either case, we are going in for a direct repair of the injured facial nerve. But that those are not the cases that usually we discuss when we talk about smile reanimation in facial palsy. So they are usually the congenital or the neoplastic causes. So in those cases, what do we have? So first we have to see whether we have the motor input on the ipsilateral side, that is the affected side where we have the facial palsy, or we have to take help from the opposite normal side. Now in cases of the ipsilateral availability, we can go in for the nerve to the masseter, which comes from the trigeminal nerve, or we have an option of the hypoglossal nerve, which is the innervating nerve for the tongue musculature, or in certain cases, even the spinal accessory nerve has been tried. But there have to be certain drawbacks of these nerves because obviously they are not originally the innervating nerves for the facial musculature. So what are the drawbacks of these procedures is that they do not provide symmetry. So when a patient smiles, there is an awkward pull created by these innervated muscles because they do not have the same motor input. Then there is a problem in initiation, especially in conditions where we take the nerve to the masseter or the hypoglossal nerve, the patient has to initiate the action of smile, such as in case of masseter, the patient has to do masticating, that is the chewing movements, or for the tongue again, the tongue movement to help initiate the smile, which can obviously cause problem and embarrassment to the patient. The other part is that it leads to bad animation. That means there is an awkward pull as discussed and the smile does not appear natural. But in cases where we do not have an option, the nerve to masseter provides a very powerful motor input and we will discuss in later videos as to how this procedure is done. When we talk about an ideal procedure for the smile reanimation, obviously we have to remember our pr principle of like with like. That means we want to be able to provide a similar sort of motor input for our facial muscles. So which better nerve than the facial nerve itself. But obviously in cases where we do not have its supply on the affected side, we go in and take in a cross facial nerve, which comes from the normal side. That is the unaffected and non-paralyzed side. Now this is done via a sural nerve graft. So this procedure will be discussed in detail later and as to how to manage the muscles during the waiting period as well because obviously what is happening in these cases is that from the contralateral side so this is the normal side unaffected side and this is the ipsilateral side which is the paralyzed side this is the facial nerve input on the normal side so from here via sural nerve grafts we are transferring the innervation to the paralyzed side. So what happens during this waiting period because obviously we have to wait for the nerve to grow for the innervation to take place. So what happens to the muscles during that period of time and how that can be managed is what we will see in the subsequent video.